So this afternoon I am changing the brake shoes on our Ford 3000 tractor. I have already removed the wheel um, and all of the outer pieces. I'm down to the brake drum. Uh, to remove this brake drum, a lot of you may get to this point and realize that it doesn't want to just come off. There's a way to get it off. Uh, and number one, uh, you have to release some of the pressure from the brakes. So these brakes have an adjustment bar um, on the back side. And if I stick my screwdriver in there and I go towards the tractor, I'm gonna tighten it. I need to back it off, so I'm, I'm gonna try and loosen that bar. If I can find the star. So you're gonna have to put your screwdriver in there and there'll be little star piece that you can turn. The other thing that you'll probably need to do with these is just kind of give them a good tap around the edges. So I've been, I've been out here for several days now, just hacking away at that tractor. Um, <clears throat> the brakes, I wanted to do a video. I have not finished replacing my brake shoes, um, but I've learned a few things, and then there's still many things that I need to figure out. So I, what I thought I'd do is I'd do a quick video, just kind of, uh, what is up with these wasps? Ever since I've been out here, they've been everywhere. Anyway, I thought I'd do just a quick video 
uh, <clears throat> talking about the Ford 3000 brakes. I've heard a lot of things online and I want to show you where I am now uh, and what works and what doesn't work. So far, I don't know what works, um, to be honest with you, because I've tried a lot of different things. But I'm going to show you what I've tried because some of them I thought were pretty clever. I ended up just having to put the wheel back on. I was using a uh, high lift jack and after a couple days of working on it, I noticed that the high lift jack had been slowly shifting and I could actually hear it every now and then when I was working on it kind of I, th I think based on what I have learned, um, this is going to be a much bigger repair that I'm going to have to do after haying season. So I'm just going to have to go another year without any breaks or I guess I've made some adjustments so I will have very minimal brakes. Jack the tractor up using a high lift jack. Uh, like I said, that wasn't very stable on the back side. Uh, those jacks are never completely stable, especially if you don't keep your tractor in gear. And I didn't keep it in gear, but it's hard to do brakes on these with the tractor in gear. So the best way to do it would be to jack it up and actually have the base of the tractor sitting on something. I've seen people do it with um, cinder blocks. I am not 100% keen on that because I myself have uh, seen my tractor bust cinder blocks with its weight. I probably need a better jack or support system of some sort to really make sure that I'm, I'm putting this tractor up in a safe position. But anyway, I jacked it up. I took this wheel off. This was the uh, wheel facing the house at the time. So I figured I would start there doing my brake shoes. And the reason why I thought I had bad brake shoes is because when I put on the brakes, nothing happens. You can adjust the brakes. There's a little slot back here and you can stick a screwdriver in there. If you, there's a little wheel. Basically, if you turn the wheel towards the back of the tractor, which would be uh, pulling the screwdriver or pushing the screwdriver towards the front of the tractor, to turn the wheel back, that, uh, back towards the back of the tractor. By doing that, you loosen the, um, you will actually loosen the brakes. Now backwards toward, so doing that, you'll actually tighten the brakes up. And then if you go in the opposite direction, you can loosen the brakes. So um, before you try and remove your brakes, you need to loosen them as much as possible. Um, anyway, <clears throat> after removing the wheel and removing that front hub, you get to your brake hub cover thing, and uh, that is where I got stuck for days. And the reason why I got stuck there for days, um, I, I, I really couldn't tell you. I don't have a hub puller, so I'm, I'm guessing that could have been part of my problem. I did invent my own hub puller and I felt like I was getting some pretty serious tension on that thing. Okay, so this is kind of my homemade hub puller. Um, there's actually a pretty decent amount of tension on there, but it's still not wanting to come loose if I tap it. brake hub is just not wanting to pop. I've put a lot of penetrating oil down in there. Um, still no luck. I tried using a lot of uh, lubricants to get in there and try and help uh, erode away at the rust. I even tried uh, heating it up with a torch. Now, none of the torches that we have work. It's, I wasn't getting a very hot flame out of any of them, but I know that I got that thing freaking hot because it was hot to the touch, it was smoking. Still wouldn't, wouldn't freeze it up, wouldn't, wouldn't break it apart. So I've definitely got something going on on this left side. I didn't bother trying with the right side because as it was up and at an angle, I noticed that I've got an axle seal leak that was coming down on my tire down there. Um, 
which, you know, that's basically hydraulic fluid. It's pretty easy to tap, top off. I can continue to operate with that leak. Um, but I did notice that it, it, that it is leaking down there. And uh, that, that's gonna be another problem because even if I fix my brakes, uh, and th that one over there looked like it had a lot of grease on it too. It, it actually looks like it has more grease on it than this one does. But it, even if I replace my brakes, those brake shoes are just gonna soak up that hydraulic fluid and it's gonna ruin another set of brake shoes. Before I do my brake shoes, I, I'm gonna have to figure out a way to get this, the back end of this tractor extremely stable, take off both sides, and go in and really uh, do some seal work on, on these axles, which the seals aren't expensive. It's just a time consuming job. I probably need to have a real brake uh, hub puller. I also probably should have uh, some, some other different size pullers to be able to pull everything out and, and do it effectively. So I wanna make sure once I, when, I, when it's time to do this that I have all the tools on hand and I'm ready to go. I also noticed another thing, probably, you know, I, my brakes have probably gone bad from the leaks, um, but they've also, uh, uh, the brake pedal. And I don't know how I couldn't have noticed this before, but look at this. There are no springs under here to pull the brake pedal back up. So the brake pedal has just basically been uh, putting its weight down on the brakes and, and wearing the brake shoes down as, as it goes. Um, so the brake pedal, I need to get springs for the brake pedal. And what I'm probably gonna do is go ahead and get the springs for the brake pedal um, and with the brake pedal all the way up, go ahead and adjust out the shoe as far as I can get it and um, hopefully have some level of brakes uh, because I don't want to get into a repair this big until the fall when we're, we're basically not using the tractor for a long period of time. Um, this is going to be a lot of work and I don't think I have that amount of time right now. So it's just going to have to, uh, I'm going to have to deal with it the way it is until the fall. But it, it's a little saddening that it's the way it is, but I have driven this for a year without brakes and I can, I can make it one more year without brakes. But the springs under here, definitely a big issue. So I've definitely had some fun these past few days. Uh, this is my, my brake hub puller that I invented. Just made it out of some junk out of the barn. Um, and this was pretty effective. The only thing is that these, I, I would probably suggest using a carriage bolt, something with a wider head, um, and it might hold on just fine. And a, and a longer screw, as I pulled this out, I kept hitting the end of the threads here. So um, if I decide to use this, I'll be replacing these with carriage bolts. These little metal things didn't do anything. And I'll be putting in a, um, a screw with a, long, a bolt with, a, with more threading on it so I can just thread it out as far as I can pull that thing. Um, the strap, ratchet strap, did pretty good. I, I caught it on fire when I was using the torch, but otherwise the ratchet strap worked pretty good. So, you know, there, there might be some hope for my puller. It deserves, it deserves some serious credit, I think. But for now, um, I'm calling it quits on the brakes. I did have a lot of fun the past few days, though. I learned a lot about the tractor. Um, I got my hydraulics in. I got my uh, water pump in. I thought the water pump would be a much bigger job than the brakes. Um, but the brakes are gonna be a big job on this tractor because of those seals um, and because of the, the stuck hubs. It's gonna take me a lot longer. I might have to heat them up and bang on them for days uh, before they come loose. But from what I've read online, stuck hubs will eventually come loose. You just have to keep working on them. So uh, brake drums, sorry, this is my brake drum puller. My brake drum puller did not work the way I wanted it to. If I can get those drums off, I think it'll be fairly easy to fix everything else. The seals are much further in the tractor, so there's more things that need to come off, and that's why I'd rather just get the thing jacked up, uh, both wheels off at the same time, and really go to town on it uh, to make sure that I don't wreck 
the next set of shoes I put in there. Oil on shoes is not good for the for the for the shoes. It soaks them up, and then you have to replace them. So um, a lot of work that needs to be done to get the brakes on this thing right.